how to create a cash flow forecast in Google Sheets. This is going to be kind of an abridged version. I'm skipping past all the setup that's required. This is really just to give you an idea of what this looks like and how it works. And we're gonna show you how to build a schedule out. So the first step is really what I'm skipping over, which is where you run the reports in QuickBooks Online, export them into, you have to go into Excel first, that gets converted to Google Sheets in 10 seconds. And then we set up and balance the statement of cash flow so that everything can be flowed from any schedule that we wanna create over to the appropriate line item, which will then show us the impact on cash in the bank, 12 months, 18 months out, however far we wanna go. So let's take a look at my screen and I'll show you exactly what this looks like. If I come over here to Google Sheets, you'll see I've got it all set up. I've got my balance sheet here. I've got my profit and loss here. I went ahead and set up a revenue projection just based on an average. This again is a sample company file. And here is the statement of cash flows. And I always run a balance check at the bottom to make sure that it is in fact balanced and once you get it to this point and i have lots of videos out there if you're interested in learning more about how to get it to this place or just want help with this reach out to me all my information is easy to find if you're watching this on youtube or certainly if you're on my website so what we'll want to do is come over here and let's look at something we can project let's say we want to just to do a simple one we want to project something within the legal and professional fees such as let's say the accounting fees we want to see what this is actually going to cost us so we're going to project, we're going to assume that we're still in the month of March of 2017. Uh, the historical data is coming from February. So we're going to start here. Let's create a very quick schedule. Uh, I'm going to go create a new sheet. And we're going to call this Professional Fees Accounting. And I like to put PL in front of any profit and loss account. It just makes it very easy to look at, especially when you're looking at the list here of all of your tabs. Now what I want to do is I want to take my timeline and we'll copy this over. And essentially here I'll put the title Professional Fees Accounting so that when we're looking at this we know exactly what we're looking at. Now I can be as detailed as I want here or I can summarize it as much as I want. The point being that we're about to create something that's dynamic that's going to get flowed over to the P&L. So let's forget all the historical stuff and let's start with March of 2017. And let's say we're paying our accountant, uh, you, know, you know, and I'm talking about our accountant, not just our tax preparer. Let's say it's 1500 a month, you know, just for the accounting and bookkeeping. We can call this bookkeeping. Some companies have them on a separate schedule and we'll call this tax prep, right? This way we can really be specific. So let's say our bookkeeping is $1,500 a month. We're just going to set that equal and copy it across. This way at any point in the timeline, if I want to say, hey, we're going to increase the fee to $2,000, I just have to do it in one place and everything updates from there to the right. Now the tax prep we'd expect to happen, tax returns are due in March, so we should get a bill for it in March or April. So let's just put it in April and say we're going to get a bill for another $1,500 for the tax prep. And if we decide we're going to file an extension and not get the bill till later, of course we can push it out till September or October. And then total professional fees. Accounting, quick sum formula. And we'll copy that across. And now we have our total that goes over to the profit and loss. So we go back to the profit and loss and I find my professional fees accounting line item, that's here. We start from March and I just say equals. And we do have a separate line here for the bookkeeper. So in this case, we'd have done it on a separate schedule or you can combine the two accounts. So I set this equal, click over here. I need the March total, enter. Okay, and then we're gonna copy that across. And when we do, April should show the extra amount for the tax prep bill. And sure enough, it does. It's that simple, folks. Once you have it built, <laughs> it's that simple. You can create a schedule. And now let's take a look at the statement of cash flows and see what the impact is. The impact is going to start with the net income. So right now in March and April, we're showing losses because we, well, part of it at least is because we just added in significant expenses. So here's your net income for March and April, which just got reduced because we just went from $75 a month to $1,500 and then 3,000. So this is the net income flowing over here to the statement of cash flows. That's what we're starting with. 
everything else in between, another subject for another video, but comes down to what our cash balance in the bank is going to be at the end of the day. And this right here lets us know that we're going to be in trouble as of April, that we're going to be, uh, we're going to be running short on cash. We're going to need to find some money there to cover the shortfall. That, my friends, is the power of doing these cash flow forecasts. And of course, the power of doing them in Google Sheets is the power of having the collaborative capabilities that Google Sheets has to offer. As always, if you have any questions, reach out to me, Seth at nerdenterprises.com or 866-945-8070. I hope you learned something here and had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you.